Hey, how you doing? Uh, good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to another time here. Welcome to another time in the upper room, another opportunity and privilege to pray. Uh, I've been doing a study through the book of Proverbs as we lead ourselves in a place of prayer. And uh, we're pre presently uh, reading, studying through the book of Proverbs chapter 7. And uh, we're in verse 7 on a topic we picked uh on the wows, the craftiness, the, the trappings, the tricks, the weapons of the enemy, the evil one, the devil, you know, and the first one we've been on for a while, which is simple mindedness. Simple mindedness is a weapon. It's called missile of the devil to get us. You know, we've studied through that for some time now, and we're presently looking at the way to overcome it, you know, and we've looked at several things on, on how to overcome simple mindedness, the evil of simple mindedness. You know, we've looked at self reflection, we've looked at setting goals, living a life of purpose, we've looked at the need to prioritize responsibilities, we've looked at the need to create routines in our life, have a habit, create a habit intentionally, program our subconsciousness to function, you know. And uh, yesterday we looked at the need to control our mind, to practice mindfulness, to have our mind, cultivate our mind to work for us, not against us. You know, we talked about the need not to be filled our lives with regret, not to be trapped in the past of our lives. We talked about the need also not to be trapped in the future, you know, not to be anxious about the things to come. You know, we talked about the need to rather pray, commit our life, commit the issues of our life, the things that will have trapped us either in the past or in the future, commit it in the place of prayer to God. God says, be anxious for nothing, be anxious for nothing, but in every everything by prayer and supplication let the, your request be made known to God. You know Bible says that cast all your cares your regrets, the things you think you have you have missed cast it all onto the Lord because he cares for you. He cares for you. You can't do anything about your past but there's someone who can do something about it. There's someone who says that he works all things together for her good but our our, our correct, correct things are missing mistakes also the things that we did intentionally the things we did unintentionally the mistakes the errors of our life there's someone that can take care of it we can't handle it because once when, once it's past you can't change your past but there's someone that can work it all together for good he can make good of our mistake he can make good of our errors he can make good of our wrong wrong trippings but he needs us to commit it into his hands. Let's not struggle with him. Allow him to walk his walk in our life. Right? So that is called to a place of prayer. Our place of prayer is that one of the ways in which we get our mind in a place to function rightly. You know, I've, I've shared this before, but the way our mind is created to function is created to function in the present moment. Because the way the mind works, anytime we see something, anytime we encounter anything in our life, there's, there's a quick, you know, uh, there's a quick, Thing that goes to the mind to check, oh, how do I reference what I am seeing right now? I'm seeing this thing. How, what is this thing to me? You know, anytime we see any encounter we come across, you are always asking, your mind is asking the question, what is this? Is this an enemy? Is this a friend? How do I relate with this thing, this person? So it goes back to your data bank and checks, oh, is there any reference to this thing? Is there anything I can compare this thing to? What is this? You know, your mind does this so fast that you, you don't know that it's happening. But that is that is why we talk about bias, unconscious and conscious bias, because we all live by bias, because everything that we meet, we are referencing it to something in our past, something in our store, something in our memory. And we're making decisions based on how that thing reflects what we have there before. That's why we get stuck if we are seeing something for the first time we have not seen before. We are stuck 
because we have no reference point where in a moment whereby we are seemingly we are seemingly held captive in that moment where where where, where as, as it were stuck or when we see something that reminds us of something that has happened in our life before that is either important to us maybe we'll miss something you know something that is full of some emotion we are stuck right so we have those moments in our life, either a deja vu moment or just a moment whereby, you know, we're just lost, we're, we're, we're enraptured by the moment, right? But let's, you know, we're just talking about the way the mind works, you know? We all have biases, bias based on our past experience. Lord, it's a human thing to have bias. Bias is just the way you have either to accepted things to be based on your experience in the past and, and the first thing we do when we don't think is that we judge every other thing that we see based on our experience of our past call our bias right but if you if you if you don't think you are you are the messy of your bias that's what we call unconscious bias right you you will interpret things you will do things based on your experience of the past right therefore you 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 stereotype people oh and, and so funny enough i saw someone in, in in the clinic yesterday i've always thought it was it was Igbo. it was from the southeast lo and behold is is a yoruba is <laughs> from the southwest you know, somebody just had the form, the look, the walk, the demeanor of someone that I associate to be an Igbo or a Southeast, lower beyond, it was the Southwest. You see, I could have judged him, I could have lived with him, I could have, you know, marked him out as one thing, but it was the other, you know, and that's where we treat a lot of things in our life, you know, because we have a bias based on our experience of the past, based on our judgment of our experience of the past, you know, but the way to live life fully is to be on assuming, is to receive things in the present the way they are, you know, not to be at the mercy of our bias, to ask questions, could it be different? Is there something about this that is new? Can I learn something new from this? Not just close the chapter, oh, I've known it all, you know, but to be live actively, to come alive. That's what I'm going to be talking about this Sunday, you know, at my book club. My life, my life, my life. Live intentionally, not live passively. Live intentionally, not passively. You know, I I, I put out a quote today, today by Mars Moreau, which says a lot of people die at 25, but they get buried at 65. They're just zombies, dead men walking. Dead men walking, you know, dead men walking, the devil has got you. Don't allow the devil to make a miss meal of you. Be alive, come alive. Be intentional, be proactive about your life. Take control of your life. Take ownership of your life. Don't let your life just be at the mercy of the circumstance, at the mercy of the flow, at the mercy of what is going all around. Take control of your life. Determine where you want your life to be, where you want your life to be, the direction you want your life to go and direct it therein. Right? Don't be at the mercy of your bias. Don't be at the mercy of your experience of the past. Someone failed you. That is not the reason why you should be a failure. Someone disappointed you. That's not the reason why you should dislike everybody or hate everybody. You know, a man failed you doesn't mean that all men are bad. A woman failed you doesn't mean all women are bad. Wake up to life. Wake up to life. If you are good, then there are other people just like you. They are just as good as you also. Don't miss life because of the experience of the past. Don't miss life because of the bias of your life. You know, and that's what we do when we take control of our mind. When we take control of our mind. We're not in the right ways. We're not just, you know, doing things because people are, people are demanding of us. We learn to say no to the things that are not in line with, with the goals and, and, and the purpose of our life. We learn to say yes to the things that are in line with the purpose, the goals, the targets we have set for ourselves. We don't just, we do, we don't, we're not just people pleasing. You know, we are goal, our, our purpose, our walk pleasing. We'll say yes to life. We say yes to life and no to everything that is not in line with that is not in line with that life, irrespective of what anybody thinks about it. You know, we only live this life once, and once is enough if we live it well. We choose to live this life we have been given well. 
we choose to get the best of this life we have been given. You know, we don't let it just pass away. We don't let it, we don't let it be stolen by anyone. We don't, we don't live comparing ourselves to anybody, but we make the best of our second, the best of our minute, the best of our hour, the best of our day, the best of our week, the best of our month, the best of our year. Right? Because that is our responsible. And that's what mindfulness does to you. It takes control of your mind. You don't allow your any other thing to control your mind but yourself. And you let your mind help you in the direction you ought to go, in the direction of the of the shaping of your life, in the direction of your calling of your life, in the direction of the talent of your life, in the direction of the giftings of your life, in the direction that you believe the one who brought you here will help you go. It's your life. It's not another person's life. God bless you. Shalom. Thanks for being here with me. See you tomorrow. God bless.